Mm-hmm. Should we start off by like cheersing each other? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> stop doing that without knowing an episode we're on. I think we're in episode 15. 15, that's my favorite number. Mm-hmm. Welcome to episode. <laughs> I feel like I say favorite number every time. It's like, whoa, this was 14. Whoa, we're at 10. That's like two whole hands. I mean, it's exciting. And 15 is like my literal favorite number. Oh, okay. Like 15 and 32 were my volleyball numbers. So this is like an actual special number for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I don't think I've ever had a special number. Oh. It's a little so weird. we can be really excited about your special. That's a little weird. That's not weird. You don't have like a favorite number. I mean, like seven's a nice number. Seven's but, like, everyone's favorite number. Yeah. It's so unoriginal. But, like, I don't I'm just kidding. Like... <laughs> cool. I'm gonna drink my wine over here. Just kidding. Seven was my number in college because it's also one of my favorite numbers when fifteen was taken. <laughs> I love you, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so fifteen an exciting number. Um, if you also don't have a favorite number, you're not alone. I'm there with you, and apparently we're in the minority. <laughs> but as we were saying, welcome to episode freaking 15. It's yes. so exciting. Yes. Um, before we get into it, while you guys are here, don't forget to subscribe to whatever you're listening on. Yes, YouTube. Or watching. Podcasts, <laughs> channels, platforms. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyways, let's get into it. So, yeah. Catherine, how are yes. you doing this week? How's it going? Yeah. So, I'm excited to say that this week was an okay week. And I have yet to say that. Like, I'm gonna go cry. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's really wild, though. That makes me so happy. I know. Thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's... Like, I can't remember the last time where I was, like, I've had a good week. Like, Monday was still a little wonky where, like, I felt a little numb and a little out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I felt happy. I felt okay. I felt like I could manage things. I I was recording for my, like, video diary of my symptoms today. Yeah. And I was like, I'm feeling spicy again. <laughs> I love spicy Catherine. <laughs> I was like making the like. It's <laughs> a great sticker idea. Feeling spicy. Feeling spicy. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but I was like thinking about it and like just the like quickness of my thought processes like sped up. Mm-hmm. And I feel like before I was kind of this like, I use the analogy of like a plain like grilled cheese sandwich where it's like it's enjoyable. You're like it's grilled cheese is grilled cheese. Like it's good. But it's, like, the plain white bread, the, like, yeah. American cheese that you're, like, I'm We're not like quite sure. Is it really? Cheese. Yeah. It's, like, is this really cheese? What am I putting in my body? Yeah. It's not, like, a delicious, like, yummy bread with, like, yeah. four different cheeses. Yeah. Like, dipped in tomato soup, if you like that. Yeah. Yes. Like, I feel like I'm working my way towards being, like, a panini press, like, grilled cheese with some Gouda and Havarti in there, some paprika, and, like, that, like, fancy thick bread. Yeah. Nice. So, I can't yeah. wait till you get to that. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> bread, uh, grilled cheese sandwich watch 2020. Oh, my gosh. We should, like, make grilled cheeses and eat grilled cheeses on <gasps> yes. every time. Like, once you feel that way, mm-hmm. we'll make that specific grilled cheese bread you, or grilled yeah. cheese sandwich you just said. Yeah, like, we'll still make some grilled cheeses before then, but, like, the... No. Nope. Oh, okay. We're not allowed. Oh, <laughs> I'm too really sad. <laughs> um, I like that just a little, like, here we go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, I feel like I'm getting back to myself and feeling more vibrant Mm -hmm. and I haven't felt that way in a really long time. Wow, that's so exciting. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, friend. So how was, how was this week for you? I know, um, I'm just going to let you tell us about your week. (laughs) How are you doing this week? Um... (laughs) So, to be, like, totally, like, transparent and, like, whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm doing this week. Um, I don't know what's going on. I was, like, exhausted all week long to the point where I was, like, I don't know if I've ever felt this tired before. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, I've been doing really well about, like, waking up early and, 
you know, journaling and kind of having, like, a little morning routine. I was just, now that it's, like, cooler where we yeah. live, I was just starting to walk my dogs in the morning. Yeah. And this past week, I would wake up and feed my dogs mm-hmm. and then either fall asleep on my couch or go right back to bed. So, yeah, I was just, like, exhausted. And I feel like, too, it was very, like, so tired and in a way that was, like, super distracting. Mm-hmm. And I, like, felt like this week, like, I could not focus. I just felt very, like... Like, I don't, and I don't even know how to explain it either. Just, like, very, like, I couldn't function all, like, properly all week mm-hmm. long. And I don't quite know what, like, the reason behind it is. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's because um, we're coming up on the year anniversary when my parents both um, landed in the hospital, mm-hmm. almost died within three days of each other mm-hmm. for completely different reasons. Yeah, like a really rough rough time for you Mm -hmm. and then after that that's kind of like when everything else started going back so I got Mm -hmm. laid off and stuff like that so like we're just kind of getting into that time of year and um I know I was telling my therapist about it not this past session but the session before that I was like I don't know how I'm gonna handle it and I was like I feel okay today but I can feel my body trying to like fight like having to like fight a little bit to Mm -hmm. feel okay Mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking that maybe that's what it is where my body was just like you're tired like you're just you're trying to fight off whatever anxiety you have yeah uh whatever fear you have and I also too am having a lot of like flashbacks into it and Mm -hmm. I can remember um everything that happened in those two weeks almost down to the second I can remember the first three days literally I guess four days um up until my dad got to the hospital so it was like a Monday my mom got in the hospital we took my dad to the hospital on Thursday so I can literally remember like what happened when I woke up that Monday morning Mm -hmm. like I remember the six hour drive Mm -hmm. like I remember just every single thing like from that moment when I woke up and got a phone call and then just drove straight to um my parents house and yeah everything just until I just remember every single thing and so um I have a lot of like weird triggers that like take me back to like making me feel like I'm there Mm -hmm. um so like there's this like really specific color of blue that triggers me because um my mom was really sick and she was throwing up a lot and Mm -hmm. her bags that she was throwing to at the hospital were blue okay and so it's but it's only that specific blue like there's something blue in front of us Mm -hmm. right now and that's not nearly yeah it has to be like that precise color yeah Yeah, yeah, and then also too like anytime I feel a little nauseous or something like that takes me back to it um Mm -hmm. also too um during that week my dad got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes Mm. and I was doing stuff for work last week and something that was around type 2 diabetes and so that kind of took me back to it and like it's just like these little things so I just feel like my body was just trying to fight to feel normal yeah and I'm exhausted and like even like I just it's like your baseline you're fighting to just be at baseline and because you're fighting to just be at baseline you're exhausted yeah because you have to put in so much more energy versus like what you normally have to do right and it's weird because I'm not feeling like scared or something that's gonna happen again Mm -hmm. like I'm not like worried about them they're both actually doing really well right Mm -hmm. now like even I was talking to my mom a couple of weeks ago and I was like oh my god I can't believe it's been a year and she was like well I'm stronger my mom's a power lifter and she was like I'm stronger than I was before that like I'm lifting 1700,000 pounds or whatever (laughs) precisely 1700,000 pounds yeah exactly (laughs) Um, so she's, I mean, she's stronger than she used to be. My dad's actually doing really well. Um, and so I just, like, I'm not worried about them, like, being sick right now. Or, Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm always scared of, you know, always scared just because of my parents' history with being sick. Yeah. So I'm always scared of them, like, getting sick. But I'm not, like, necessarily, like... You know, like, it's going to happen again at this time. Yeah, like, Mm -hmm. I'm not, like, worried that they're going to get sick again right now. Or, like worry that something bad is gonna happen Mm -hmm. it's just like my brain like reliving those two weeks Mm -hmm. is kind of just like and that's like exhausting yeah (laughs) that happens a lot of times too around like anniversaries like anniversaries of deaths anniversaries of traumatic events Mm -hmm. and especially with this being like the first anniversary of things like Mm -hmm. that makes total sense that your body is like trying to fight off these things because it's like things like it's getting closer and closer it's just more reminders yeah and so it's just it's just been that so 
I'm hoping that I slept pretty good last night. I slept for a long time. I'm hoping that helps. I'm planning to sleep some more tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of hoping to get as much sleep as I can just to like help me not be so tired. Yeah. And kind of just to honestly just get through this month. Yeah. Which also sucks because I love October. Like it's Halloween, like your month. October is my favorite thing. I if mean, you can't like, tell by the pumpkin blanket, <laughs> like our trick or treat wine glasses, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, which way to the wine like you yes. know it's Halloween it's just my favorite I decorate for Halloween in September it would be in August if Nate let me but he doesn't so. I think that that's totally reasonable it's totally not gonna, normal. we're not gonna fight on that one right now I just love it and like it just makes me so happy and one of the reasons is because like my whole family loves Halloween and mm-hmm. my, my grandpa actually when he was like younger Um, he used, not younger, I say younger as in, like, just when I was growing up, Mm because he's kind of old now, so he's not doing it anymore, but he used to decorate, like, crazy, like, so many decorations. It was, like, it was wild, and people used to, so he lived in Riverside in California. Okay. And people used to drive, like, hours just to see his house. He's one of those people. Yes, and he would have, like, a guest book in the front, and, like, just, I just remember, like, going to his house, like, not usually on Halloween day, because it was so crazy and yeah. you couldn't, like, see a lot. So we would usually go, like, the week before, the week of, like, whatever, and just see, like, everything leading up to his door. It was just so cool. And then, like, my mom likes to decorate for Halloween. Mm-hmm. We always actually have this um, big, huge, like, dummy, I guess, that sits okay. out in our front yard. Mm-hmm. And one year my dad sat there because, for those of you who don't know, my dad is six foot eight. He's a pretty big dude. He's really tall. <laughs> and so, and, like, my mom uses his my dad's like old um like overalls when he oh, when yeah, he was yeah. an engineer mm-hmm. so she uses like his clothes to make this dummy so it's a pretty big dummy and when you're my dad sat out there and was like scaring kids like we just love Halloween yeah and so I just love October and so I am super bummed that I'm I'm hoping next year I'm not so much like uh, I hope this month yeah. is just over but like even I didn't think I was gonna feel quite like this because of how much I do love October yeah and even in September I was like already planning like Halloween stuff that I mm-hmm. wanted to do just like you know, like, thinking of, like, what I was going to dress up as, even though I'm not going anywhere on Halloween because, you know, pandemic. But still, I want to, like, do a couple of, like, fun stuff just for yeah. fun, like, the week of Halloween, like, here at my house, you know, do some makeup looks and stuff. And I've been yeah. thinking about it and, like, planning it. And now I'm like, Ugh. so it just kind of sucks. Yeah. And I think, too, over time, it'll eventually get easier. Like, I know for myself with, like, anniversaries of, like, some of the difficult days, um, with my own losses in the beginning it was really hard like it was similar where it's like those moments those memories like came flashing back and now it's like it's kind of hard on the day of but around that time is like so much easier to handle and it doesn't feel as like jarring and out of place and you know I hope that that comes sooner for you rather than later because I know how much you love this month and I think that it's probably a good thing that it's this month so you have other things to look forward to and things to fill your time with that can kind of like balance that out yeah that's Um, true and we can probably have a whole episode on trauma oh yeah yes (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah I also too just think it's weird because it's like and I talk to my counselor about this all the time and I'm like but neither of them actually died so like why am I still like you know, and she's like, well, it's trauma. Like, that was mm-hmm. traumatizing for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but they're still alive. And she's like, it doesn't matter. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. to get into our topic today, Katharina. Just kidding, that's what Nate always calls you. <laughs> Katharina. His accent's a lot better, though, because he turns it into, <laughs> like, this cool, like, Italian accent. Anyways, Catherine. It's okay. People in undergrad used to call me that based off of a Vampire Diaries character. I was saying, yeah. Yeah. That's why I think that's what Nate does, too. Yeah, so I'm more used to being called Katharina and Kath versus, like, People calling me Cat. Yeah. That's not as common, but like Katarina and Cat, I hear like regularly. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. It's like depending on how like bougie I am that day. Like yeah. bougie day is Katarina, regular but you day have to is Cat. the accent. You can't just say Katarina. That's weird. Katarina. Kat- I don't know. I can't mm. do accents. I shouldn't do accents. But well, what are we talking about today? <laughs> so today we are talking about relationships and dating and mental health. And I think. For us, we have our own experiences of mental health and like the beginning stages when we're first starting to date and how that impacted it. And now like moving forward when you start to like grow up as an adult and you realize like, oh, my mental health is even more impactful. Like what that's like being an adult dating with mental health and Mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Yeah. 
what like when you were younger what was it like for you to date and like because this was way before you realized you had mental health yeah like things going on yeah (laughs) what was it like for me to date yeah like with dating did you find that like your mental health impacted your relationships or like the people you would choose or just like how you would go about dating um I don't quite know because I don't know if I like struggled too mm. much with my mental health back yeah. then. Um, but I would say that I always like. I mean, I don't know. It's tough because I feel like definitely and like I mean, mental health always impacts a lot of things, mm-hmm. even if you realize it or not. But I feel like too, like when I first started dating. Um, like one of my ex boyfriends, mm-hmm. you know, we were we were pretty young, and he wasn't like pressuring me to have sex or anything, mm-hmm. but he was like asking me a lot, and I feel like that kind of like really got to me mm-hmm. in the way of like, okay, well, I have to, and then I was like, no, but I don't have to. Yeah, like, I'm not going to because I'm not ready. Yeah, and so I actually think that like my mental health used to be stronger, okay, than it is now because like back then, I mean, like I was like very like confident in like what I was saying, and I could be like, no, like. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna have sex with you. I'm yeah. however old I was, sixteen at the time. I was like, I'm not ready. Yeah, you're able to set boundaries a little bit easier, like yeah. in some some settings and some situations. Some settings. <laughs> <laughs> boundaries are hard. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like, like especially in high school when I was younger, I feel like it wasn't. I don't know if my mental health impacted it mm-hmm. too much back then because mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think that I've always struggled with some form of anxiety, but it was more of me being like shy. Mm. and like awkward yeah (laughs) and like you know but I also too feel like it could have um you know that part that we kind of talked about in the last episode of you know finding validation in the way that I look and Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I've been like that forever and you know like needing that kind of attention in that aspect and so it was like I feel like in that way and you know my mental health of like being insecure and Mm -hmm. needing that part and needing that I would like have a boyfriend or like have boyfriends but still be like (laughs) other boys just to get like that kind of like attention yeah 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 it's funny I feel like I was similar in that way but like guys didn't like me (laughs) so like I was this and it's so interesting because you even met me like once I was married so you never met boy crazy Catherine Oh my gosh, were you, like, super boy crazy? I was so boy crazy. Oh my gosh. Like, I remember being in pre-K and, like, having crushes on boys oh, and I wanting them to be my, my first boyfriend. Crushes in pre-K, so don't worry. Like, do you know those pianos that have, like, built-in songs that she's supposed to play yes. on to? I had one of those pianos, and I was like, this is going to be mine and Corey's song <laughs> <laughs> when we get married. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my god. But yeah, I remember, like, I had friends, and, like, they weren't, like interested in boys or dating and I just wanted a boyfriend so bad my whole entire life like I yeah why do you think that is um mental health right so (laughs) as a kid I'm I'm not sure I mean I don't really remember what like what was going through my brain as like an elementary schooler but I know as I got older in like middle school and high school I began to think if only I had a boyfriend like I would feel happy if I had someone that loved me, that would prove that I was, like, worth something. Mm. Um, and so I desperately wanted someone, because I was like, if I'm in a relationship and there's this validation, like, they're holding my hand, they're kissing me, they're telling me that they like me, it means mm. that I'm worth something. Um, except no. <laughs> I was, like, in love with my best friend all through high school, and that never worked out. Yeah, I So, mean. like, really great times there. But it, it was this idea of, like, having someone else in my life is going to fix my mental health. It's going to make me feel happy. Yeah, so you were, like, dependent on that relationship. Mm-hmm. I wonder why you were dependent on, like, a relationship rather than, like, a friendship or something like that. Yeah. Because I feel like I had solid friends. Like, I had that part of me. Yeah. Like, I felt loved and connected with my friends. But I think also I didn't see very many healthy relationships growing up. <laughs> um and I think that I I just felt this need like I looked up to people that were in a healthy relationship that were connected with someone. Mm-hmm. It was like that final piece of like 
you're special, like you're pretty, mm-hmm. you have value, you're worthwhile because someone has taken an interest in you that like doesn't have to. Yeah. Like they've decided to like do this commitment or take this next step. Yeah. And I think that once I got into college, it was very much so like that for a while. I think maybe like halfway through college when I started doing counseling again in college, mm-hmm. I started to adjust that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really hard. I needed that validation. Like I, I remember walking around like, I think even being in high school when I was like so awkward, like couldn't do my eyebrows, couldn't do makeup correctly. Like I mean, who could in that time, eyeliner though? like up to the like crease of my I mean, eyelid? That was like the popular thing though. Like having like I feel like like those weird like thin eyebrows, like mm-hmm. not like quite like I don't know. I didn't even get to do my eyebrows, so mine were like <laughs> thick. So thick eyebrow, thick eyeliner, like probably like light blue like eyeshadow. Oh my god, don't worry. I used to do light blue. I th- I'm telling you, like that was popular back. then back in the day you're making me feel a lot better about the horrible horrible oh don't worry i I see it all the time too and i used to do like like a lot of silvers oh like that that weird like crusty silver yes yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um and so i remember i would be like i remember vividly a school trip i did for dance team went to san diego i think it was Mm -hmm. and these guys were probably in their like late teens early 20s were like at the same street corner as us how old are you again I was, I think, going into my sophomore year of okay, high school. Okay. So I was like, what, 15? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And I'm just like making goo-goo eyes at them. And I'm like, oh, maybe maybe I'll catch their attention. And I'm like, looking back, I'm like, the fuck are these like 20-year-olds going to be looking at my like 15-year-old awkward ass like with my thick eyeliner and my acne? Like, no, what world? But like, I just like any boy I walk past on the street, I'd be like, oh, are they a potential love interest? Like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah. It was a lot. Oh my gosh, I was definitely not boy crazy like that. Yeah, I was desperate. (laughs) (laughs) I was a desperate fool. Yeah, and it was actually funny because this morning um, I was talking to my sister and her friend and I was like, you guys are so funny when it comes to boys. And they were like, why? And I was just explaining to them and I was like, and then I was like, yeah, but I've always been very much like, listen, you either like me or you don't. You want to mm-hmm. date me or you don't. Like, mm-hmm. and, and then my sister was like, yeah, but every boy you did that to answered back with yes. And I was like. True that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot harder when you like when guys when you're like pursuing the guys like actively and you're just like, please, you want to give it a try? I promise. I promise I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and like but I think that that's a good thing though that you're able, like I think that that's great to be like either you want to be with me or you don't like I'm not going to play this game like I know I have value like I'm worth dating yeah so like make up your mind yeah and like I even had one boyfriend who I told him that like it was something like where he was like well I want you to like focus more on me and I was like we're 15 16 I think and I was like and I'm playing volleyball like that's my goal is volleyball in school Mm -hmm. and then we broke up (laughs) because I was like no like my goal in life right now is not boyfriends like that's so good yeah I was like if you don't want to be with me that's fine I can find somebody else when I want but like I'm gonna play volleyball and try to be better at volleyball I'm not gonna like pine over some like (laughs) boy who like you think I'm gonna quit volleyball when I'm 16 because a boy was like pay attention to me like no good for you I probably would have (laughs) it's fine I'm better now (laughs) but I think that that's great like you were able to be like there's gonna be someone else like this is not the end all be all see and I, I always make jokes with Nate too actually because I've never been like a clingy significant other like Mm. I've never been a clingy partner where I'm like wanting to hang out with them all the time or Mm -hmm. like wanting to be next to them where I want them like hold my hand all the time and with Nate I'm like please never leave me I just want to hang out with you all the time like I love you so much and I've never been like that with anybody else before yeah and like even like I was you know I was with my ex-boyfriend for almost four years and like I feel like my mental health in that relationship was very like disconnected almost Mm. because I feel like he put very little like, I don't think he really cared about, like, what I did or, like, who mm. I hung out with, which, like, is fine. And, like, I'm not saying that people need to be, like, you can't hang out with this person. Like, it wasn't like that, but it was almost like he didn't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, whatever. Just like, yeah, just, like, didn't care. And it's I know it's most of the time because he was hanging out and doing things that mm. I didn't like at the time. Yeah. And lying to me about it. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, basically, our whole three-and-a-half-year relationship was a lie. It's fine. <laughs> Super cash. <laughs> 
<laughs> but like I feel like too like that you know and so like when we so when Nate and I first started dating mm-hmm. Nate and I actually started dating pretty fucking quickly after my ex-boyfriend and I broke up and mm-hmm. I think a big reason for that is just because Nate and I um both have these personalities of like you know I I also really love like affection mm-hmm. and one of, one of my top five love languages is physical touch and mm-hmm. you know showing that affection and Nate's very affectionate with yeah. me in that way and so like I just feel like our personalities we just kind of like started dating about two and a half three months after my three and a half year long relationship <laughs> it was great but when we first started dating you know Nate cared about stuff that I did and mm-hmm. Nate actually put effort into like you know me mm-hmm. and I was like whoa dude let me be my own person this is weird <laughs> I literally was like why do you care about like what I'm doing and he was like I just asked you what you like what friend <laughs> you were hanging out with today and I was like why does it matter <laughs> and he was like oh, uh. <laughs> and I was like oh he's like because I want to be invested yeah, in a relationship like, because I just care about you and want to like hang out I guess I don't know like <laughs> I you know like and it was never like I don't know I feel like too like Nate and I when we both first started dating it was very um hard because he was he's younger than me so he he was 18 when we first started dating and I little I was 20 and I actually turned 21 and so I was all excited and I was like I'm gonna go to bars and I'm gonna do this and Nate couldn't come with me because he's only 18 and I was like I don't care I'm gonna go anyways (laughs) like just kind of like that and then Nate was very much like okay well if you're not gonna care I'm gonna be like weird about it Mm -hmm. so and then that like caused some like fun times yeah we broke up (laughs) (laughs) but it all worked out where you guys are now married yeah we are for (laughs) sure married now (laughs) for sure but I think that if we didn't break up for that like three and a half three months that we were broken up for, mm-hmm. we would not be married today. Because mm-hmm. it, it gave us both time to grow and, like, learn more about, like, ourselves. Mm-hmm. Also, too, because... So, right before he moved to California, he had broken up with a girlfriend. Okay. And then he kind of, like... We always joke that how Nate's, like, loved me since he first met me. <laughs> Love at first sight. <laughs> Pretty much. Not for me. <laughs> but for Nate. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, so he kind of went from, like, being in, a, like, a longer-term relationship for, for mm-hmm. high school time mm-hmm. and then kind of coming to California and pretty much just, like, being in love with me. And I, like, went from, like, you know, dating someone for three and a half years yeah. to dating Nate, yeah. like, pretty quickly. Yeah. So we didn't have any time to really, like, have like growth. be our own person yeah. kind of thing. Because even, like, when Nate and I first met, like, at college, we became best friends, like, super, like, instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just, I just feel like we just didn't have time to, like, be ourselves, Mm -hmm. like, be our own person, and, like, also to, like, figure out, like, what kind of person we want to be in a relationship, Mm -hmm. because my previous relationship definitely wasn't healthy. Yeah. And so, like, I didn't know how to be in a normal, healthy, reciprocal relationship. Well, and I think that that's a problem that a lot of people get into, is this idea of, dating someone and they're gonna fill in those gaps that we see in ourselves they're gonna Mm -hmm. like being together is gonna fix things it's gonna make things okay and a lot of times most of the time it's it's not like that like we need to have time for ourselves for our own growth to figure out what we need what we want and we don't really have that time and space when we're Mm -hmm. in a relationship especially in the beginning and when we're young too and then it starts to get tricky because you haven't taken the time to do what you need to do what you want to yeah and I feel like it's really easy to in the beginning of a relationship to invest your entire self Mm -hmm. into one person and Mm -hmm. not focus on yourself Mm -hmm. and so you're really focusing on like what do they need what do they need what do I need to do for them Mm -hmm. instead of being like okay but what do I need in this as well oh yeah. yeah when I started dating LaCroix boy I remember on Friday and Saturday nights, I would try not to make plans because I'd be waiting for him to text me. So I wanted to leave it open just in case that he would be like, hey, you want to hang out? Which like didn't always happen. And so <laughs> it's fine. LaCroix Bar really loves me now. It's all great. Catherine's just sitting in there by herself on a Saturday night just being like, I'm like, it's fine. It's cool, guys. <laughs> Or, like, if I would go out with friends, I would check my phone and then I would leave if he, like, messaged me that he wanted to hang out or something like Mm -hmm. that. And so it was very much so, like, I 
I wasn't like worrying about my needs. I was like, I'm just going to make myself available. I want to be there. Like I need to put everything into this. Mm-hmm. And eventually it adjusted and, and we started to focus more on like having a healthy balance and me taking time for myself and him putting time and effort into me as well. Mm-hmm. But there was a long time where I was just like waiting and like doing everything for him yeah. to like make it work. Yeah. So I was, again, I was a little desperate. <laughs> And I mean, like I said, it's really easy to get so invested that you're just like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like I had to work so hard to get LaCroix Boy to agree to date me. <laughs> um, side note, so this is the story of LaCroix Boy and me. Um, he, we kind of were chatting, this is our sophomore year of college, and we were hooking up, hanging out. And right before Thanksgiving break, he was like, hey, I think we need to think about what we're doing. Like, we have mutual friends. Like, we should decide if we want to date or not. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, give me some time. Let let me think about it. I took a day or two, and then I messaged him. I was like, hey, I'm invested. Like, I would like to date. Let's, like, if you want to, like, let me know what your thoughts are. He's like, I need more time. I'm like, okay. Time goes by. Fast forward a whole fucking month. (laughs) I ask him out on a date, and at the end of the date, I give him an ultimatum of, you have three days to decide. By Sunday, you need to let me know if we're going to be dating or not. And then the court boy came over on that Sunday. I lured him with pie. I made an apple pie. Um, he came over, ate the apple pie, hung out, was really cutesy, like super sweet, yeah. and then tried to like dip without ever answering. Of course he did. Of course, yeah. And so I followed him out of my apartment. I was like, hey, wait a second. Yeah, you did what, not answer my question. Yeah, what is your answer? And then he's like, well, I mean, I guess, like, do you want to be my boyfriend? I mean, do you want to be my girlfriend? Not boyfriend, girlfriend. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So we're dating. Yeah, it's casual. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'm glad this worked out. I haven't been trying for fucking months. Right? Oh, it's all good. And then the next day, we both left for winter break and didn't see each other for a month. Oh, nice. Which is good. also why I was like, we need to decide now yeah. because it's going to get weird after winter break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But good for you for giving that, like, and I mean, I feel like you were very, like, you're a very patient person, so you were, like, mm-hmm. very patient until, like, mm-hmm. the last minute when you were like, okay, I'm not being patient anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I know. I've gone past, like, the point of patience, so. Yeah. Well, and, and so that's, that's why I was like, I felt like I worked so hard to get us dating that I was like, I need to make sure that this seems like the most wonderful relationship so that we don't break up. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have a boyfriend and I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, over time, I think that as I began to open up to LaCroix Boy about my own struggles, my own mental health, my own family dynamics, he became more invested and more understanding of like what my needs were. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a little difficult in the beginning yeah Mm -hmm. so how do you think that like I guess like your mental health of like whether it's like you know feeling insecure or being you know not having motivation to do things Mm -hmm. like whatever it may be how do you think that impacted like you trying to like date him or even like when you guys first started dating like how do you think that that impacted like your guys's first like couple of months together Mm mm-hmm I think that I ended up coming from the perspective of I'm so lucky to be with him. I'm so lucky that anyone even finds value in me. (laughs) I mean, that's like the honesty of like, (laughs) I'm just lucky that someone like finds me semi-attractive and like wants to spend time with me or like would be willing to like kiss me. Catherine, you're beautiful. I would kiss you right now if we were married. (laughs) It's fine. Let's leave our husbands. (laughs) Um, and so despite my hopes and dreams of being in a relationship is going to solve my feeling sad and feeling empty, it did not. And sometimes it even fed into that a little bit more because I was like, this isn't perfect. I Mm -hmm. thought that you date someone and that's like the final step that makes things perfect. And it definitely does not. Yeah. That's for fucking sure. Yeah. And so I also had a struggle with deciding like, am I even worth, like, talking about what my needs are? Like, mm-hmm. is it worth me saying, like, hey, I don't like this. The, I don't like this behavior that you're doing. Yeah. Because, again, I was coming from that perspective, of, like, who am I to, like, ask for something? You're Katharina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get that, though, and I feel like it's definitely hard. I feel like, so, my mom raised me to kind of be the opposite of that. My mm-hmm. mom raised me to be like, you 
are like amazing you are wonderful like boys are lucky to like be with you and so mm-hmm. I was like you're right so I feel like that's just so interesting to hear that too because I always thought like okay like yeah like especially with Nate I'm like mm-hmm. I mean I feel like I'm so fortunate and so lucky to have someone who's so kind to me mm-hmm. especially because you know in previous relationships they haven't been very kind to me and very nice to me so mm-hmm. I, I know that feeling of like like, who am I, like, to deserve this kindness? I've never yeah. felt that way of, like, who am I to deserve, like, someone, like, loving me and wanting me and being attracted to me. It's always been, like, okay, but who am I to deserve how sweet and kind and genuine and, like, how much he loves me? Like, yeah. Who, so, like, I get it in that perspective. Yeah. And it was definitely difficult the first time that I told LaCroix Boy about my mental health struggles. Mm-hmm. I remember it was... Um, going into our junior year. So we'd been dating for maybe like six months. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had just told LaCroix boy that I loved him. Uh, not the same day, separate days. <laughs> but in the same fashion, I was just like, basically, I'm I'm having a hard time. I'm feeling really sad. And I can't, like, I don't feel better. Yeah. And so I think I'm going to, like, start going to counseling at school. And luckily, LaCroix boy, I think this is one of those moments where I was like, okay, I think LaCour Boy is worth sticking this through. Like, he's showing some compassion, some understanding. And his response to me saying, like, I think I'm going to go do counseling was, like, good. Like, I hope that you get what you need out of that. And it yeah. wasn't, like, judgmental. Like, he was there to listen to me. And yeah. he was understanding. And that showed me that underneath kind of the unengaged exterior that, like, <laughs> he did genuinely care. And there was yeah. that compassion there. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think, too, that it's, you know, important to talk about that, like, like he said, like, you know, when you get into a relationship, you're almost looking for someone to, like, fix your mental health, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's so hard to, like, be in a good, nice, stable, healthy relationship and feel sad and Mm -hmm. to feel depressed and to just be like, okay, but why am I depressed? Like, why Mm -hmm. am I so sad? I have, you know, a person who's nice to me, a person who loves me, Mm -hmm. you know, I have a stable, good job, like, I have a house, like, why am, why am I depressed? Yeah. And I feel like it's also easy for other people to look in to your life and be like, well, why are you sad? Like, you're married to a great person, Mm -hmm. you guys have a healthy relationship, Mm -hmm. like, you live in a great house, like, you're doing really well, why are you sad? Yeah. And so, I guess maybe to just to touch on, like, it's normal to be in a healthy, good, stable relationship Mm -hmm. and to still, like, to still feel depressed and yeah. to still feel sad and yeah. like just because you have a significant other who is you know treating you well and mm-hmm. being kind to you and loving you mm-hmm. and you know doing everything you need them to do it doesn't mean that you're just like healed yeah yeah <laughs> I mean I mean look at like right now like mine and LaCroix boy's relationship is really good like I think that we have a very healthy marriage mm-hmm. and I think that we have good communication and I still feel depressed and that's just from a whole bunch of other things and it it is that piece of like yes it does help to have stable relationships that does help but it's not going to solve everything solve it yeah Mm -hmm. it's not like it's just like you're good it's not like magical like pixie dust it's like believe in it and it's fine yeah and so i just and i feel like that's a that's a really hard thing for people on the outside looking in Mm -hmm. to understand too because even you know i've talked about like how I've been struggling or whatever, mm-hmm. maybe, and they're like, but why? Like, you have a great life. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, but that doesn't mean I'm not still struggling. Mm-hmm. And, like, it doesn't matter, like, how healthy your relationship is. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter, like, how much money you're making or, like, what, like, how, like, nice of a house you live in or mm-hmm. just living in a house or an apartment, whatever it may be. Like, it, that stuff, like, doesn't matter, like, when it comes to how your brain functions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the fact that, like, now that I have medication that's creating more serotonin for me, or whatever it is that it creates. Yeah, serotonin, you're right. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. Like, I'm doing so much better. It's like, there is at some level a chemical imbalance there for yes. me. Yeah, and, like, that's, you know, and I think that's one of the hardest things about mental health that people don't understand. People will look in and just be like, you're sad, like, you have nothing to be sad about, but it's, like, that doesn't mean that, like, there's not something Mm -hmm. wrong, you know what I mean? Like, like you said. Yeah, you don't see, like, the past traumas, you don't see the grief, the loss, whatever might have happened to you. Exactly, Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, some people just have a chemical imbalance, Mm -hmm. and, like, that's normal, like, it's totally normal. Hey! (laughs) (laughs) So, like, it definitely just, 
you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And I just really hate that when people are like, but you have a great life. Like, why are mm-hmm. you, why are you struggling? And mm-hmm. it's like, shut the heck up. Mm-hmm. But you don't ever say that to people. <laughs> I have an urge to sometimes. <laughs> yeah. There's sometimes I've wanted to. I don't think I've ever told anyone. I've never told anyone that either. But like sometimes you're just like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Why? Like, how am I struggling? Like, (laughs) when do you think is a good time? Like, let's say we weren't married now and we started dating. When do you think is a good time? I know. (laughs) I can't even imagine. Even when we were talking to my sister and her friend this morning, I was like, I cannot even imagine dating in my 20s at all because I've been together since I was 20. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I cannot imagine. Same. LaCroix and I have been together since I was 19. Yeah. And like with Tinder and stuff nowadays, I've never had a dating app other than Bumble BFA. (laughs) And that was so stressful, like trying to swipe right or left. (laughs) I felt so guilty. So like kudos to everyone that is out there dating right now. Like hats off to you. Yeah. Um, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think is a good time? And, like, how should someone approach talking to their mental health when they're dating? I feel like once you trust someone and once you kind of see, you know, their compassionate side mm-hmm. and or or when it's to a point when you can't handle it alone anymore, mm-hmm. you know, you know whatever, whatever comes first, I guess, where, like, you know, if you're struggling so bad and you're like, okay, I've been dating this person for... However long you feel comfortable mm-hmm. with, a month, a couple of weeks, three months, seven yeah. months, a year, however long you feel comfortable before being like, listen, mm-hmm. I'm struggling. I just, you know, thought you should know. Yeah. And I feel like, too, that's one of the really exciting things about, you know, dating someone and getting to know someone mm-hmm. is having those, like, really deep, like, personal oh, yeah. conversations. Yes. And, like, really just, like, getting to know them, like, you know, what makes them who they are and what yeah. makes them act how they act and that like vulnerable side yes, that like authentic love side it. yeah and like yes. Nate doesn't really have like a lot of that side very much and so like when we first started dating and you know, we had a couple very like deep meaningful mm-hmm. conversations but honestly it's been a couple of years since we've had like serious ones like obviously when we got married we yeah. did but like kind of since then we've just kind of been like married and it's like cool but like this year I've um had some past trauma come up for me and Mm -hmm. we've had some really great like really deep like meaningful conversations and he actually told me you know some of his past history and it honestly made so much sense Mm -hmm. and so like you know and like him explaining like what he's been through made me truly understand like why he acted the way he Mm -hmm. did when we first started dating Mm -hmm. you know how he like why he was able to grow yeah when we weren't together and like all that clarity yeah and it just made it and I think it was really good for both of us and Mm -hmm. but like I said like that's like you know back to your question (laughs) like you know having that like deep meaningful meaningful conversations with your significant other or your Mm -hmm. partner um, or just someone you're dating and you want to, you know, you want them to know you better. Mm-hmm. And if you're at that point where you're like, okay, I trust this person. I know like they've been treating me well. Mm-hmm. I, and I feel like too, there's always a point in a relationship where you're just like, I want to share everything yeah. with this person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that it's important to kind of test the waters. <laughs> so I think it can sometimes be a little dangerous on date one to be like, hi, I'm Catherine and I have depression. Here's all of my things. Like, you what? need to hold That's back a little bit. That's you yourself. I mean, no. no. Because <laughs> you don't know how they're going to respond. And, right. and you don't want opening up to someone to be a really negative experience. And so you can test the waters by doing things of, like, just sharing, like, man, I had a rough week. Like, and seeing, do they ask, like, oh, why was it rough? Are they, like, compassionate in those mm-hmm. situations? Or, like, being like hey can you help me with this thing like seeing how they handle situations where you ask for help in a different manner yeah. and if they're present and they're there for you mm-hmm. that starts to demonstrate that they're safe like for LaCroix boy I had that whole bullet point list that I made <laughs> that we talked about in a previous episode and he was there and he was present and the conversation went well and so that showed me that I could continue opening up to him and yeah. then I could tell him that I was feeling depressed and that I was going to start doing counseling and things like yeah. that and I also think too that it's important to kind of notice how they act during an argument or during a fight Mm, mm -hmm. um because you know if they're acting sweet and compassionate and trying to understand you and they're calm and they're like not rational because not everyone's rational during an argument Mm -hmm. but you know there's a difference between like arguing and being like aggressive and terrible to each Mm -hmm. other and not handling it well Mm -hmm. and arguing and being mad but not like 
not like, like aggressive destroying like, the other person, exactly, not like tearing them down, like exactly. making them feel like an even shittier human being. Right, or like <laughs> screaming at them and like, I mean, of course people are going to get mad and they're going to yell and, you know, arguing's good for everyone to a point, mm-hmm. but like seeing how they act during an argument and so like even like one time Nate and I got into an argument and I was like, why are you being so nice and calm to me right now? Mm-hmm. He was like, what do you mean? And I was like, like, it was like after we argued and I was like, you were just so calm during that entire argument like you didn't raise your voice and he was like well why would i yell at you and i was like <gasps> you're like <laughs> <What>? this exists <laughs> a man who doesn't yell at me <laughs> i've never known <laughs> you're like i'm uncomfortable what i'm comfortable i don't know how what this okay cool all right you're like i've never met a man who has not screamed at me at the top of mm-hmm. his lungs so which like bless up for nate I love like nate. yeah he's never raised his voice at me once Minus so the one like, story of, like, the joke that, yeah. Real quick, Nate, one time I was, like, I was, like, making a joke, and I was, like, hi, oh, your voice is so scary, and he was, like, you want, or I was, like, why are you yelling at me, and he was, like, you want to hear yelling, and then he was, like, this is yelling, and yelled, and I started crying, <laughs> he was, like, oh, my God, I was just kidding, and I was, like, yeah, but you can't do that to me, because boys, like, men have actually yelled at me like that before, like, you can't, I'm traumatized, and he was, like, oh, okay, sorry, and he hasn't done it since. <laughs> yeah, so, like, Never in, like, real, like, situations. Yeah, no, he's life. never serious. Yes. He yelled at me. But so into, like, just, like, n- you know, noticing how they handle stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. noticing how they handle serious, mm-hmm. hard situations. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, if you see them handling it in a very negative way, where you can be like, oh, okay, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. You know, just, like, test that out. and Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's tricky. I mean, timing's different for everyone. Um, and so... You know, if you share with someone and it doesn't go well, it doesn't mean it's not going to go well in the future. So I hope mm-hmm. that you can hold on to that. And either way, like, kudos for you for being, like, out there, putting yourself out mm-hmm. there and trying to find love for yourself. Definitely. And, you know, mental health isn't um, something that everyone understands. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, going at it with, you know, kind of, like, being like, okay, this person might not understand, Mm -hmm. and kind of just, like, being prepared for that. I mean, obviously, if they treat you really terribly, and they're like, you're stupid, or whatever it may be, you Mm -hmm. can be like, whoa, (laughs) no. (laughs) But, like, you know, like, if they don't understand it the first time, like, you know, that might be okay, and Mm -hmm. you can probably talk, like, keep talking to them about it, try to, like, help them understand it, because not everyone is raised or is around a lot of um, people who are openly talking about mental mm-hmm. health. And sadly, that's what our most of our society is. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, I think, as we're getting close on time here, what I just want to make sure you guys hear is, no matter what your mental health struggles are, you deserve love. And someone is out there to love you. Mm-hmm. You know? Whatever your type of love is, like, you can find that out there in the world. Yeah, and... <sighs> little baby Catherine I just wish I could go back to little Catherine and just hug her and just be like listen like and I'm telling this to you guys too like you were so worthy of like being loved and having somebody love you and you know asking yourself like who am I to have this like to have someone look at me and love me it's like you're fucking amazing like you're worth being loved and like you always tell me when it comes to friendships like you were worth having a nice compassionate partner Thanks who so. loves you <laughs> and you have that now so i know you believe that i hope yes. you believe that I'm now hold your hand because i just love you <laughs> i love you i hope you believe that now i'm working on it okay yeah we're we're taking steps <gasps> oh, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> we'll get there one day i mean we will and yes maybe it'll happen on the podcast oh i'm just kidding <laughs> today we solved all my problems i'm fine now cool guys it's okay. okay goodbye i'm just kidding <laughs> oh, thank you friend. But of course so, thank you guys for tuning in on that note. You guys are all worthy of love. Hell yeah. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Done. You believe it now because Courtney said so, so. <laughs> Voice of reason. <laughs> I know it's that easy, guys. Come on. It's super easy just to hear it. Yeah. If like, only you told me that like 10 years ago, yeah, I'd be like, different... you were worthy of being loved. Oh, cool. Great. I'm solved. Problem I'm solved. like, I'm oh, great. Okay. <laughs> But thanks, you guys, for joining us today. We had a lot of fun chatting about past relationships and dating and mental health. Um, If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more fun content from us. Yes, and if you do follow us on YouTube, uh, or if you don't follow us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. 
And if you're not following us anywhere else, um, subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever your guys' favorite streaming platform is. Mm-hmm. And make sure you follow us. Follow us. <laughs> make sure you follow us on Instagram at mm-hmm. That's Totally Normal, right? And we will see you guys and talk to you guys in our next episode. Bye, friends. Matane. <laughs> apartment, whatever it may be. Like. Toby, is that you? <laughs>